I was born in Mashiko, Japan, which is known for ceramic town. My father was ceramist, and I grew up in a ceramic community, looking at minge movement or monoha, gutai, sodeisha, and other legacy art movements in Japan. I traveled through a, throughout Asia, Middle East, and taught ceramics in Central America before coming to New York. My neighbor sculptor and gallerist in Japan recommended me the Art Students League uh, of New York. That's how I came to the League in 2009. This book aims to deepen and contribute to the process of ceramic work in the studio by providing a holistic view of ceramic art and resources in which people can find solutions and inspirations for their artwork. The intention is to function as supplemental instruction for my students at the League and beyond. The cover image is a part of my work exhibited in Instructor Salon in 2023 at the League. The book's contents may look and feel different than a conventional pedagogical book or familiar ceramic handbook. The personal essays and fragmented ideas may also be reminiscent of Japanese Zuihitsu writing. This is because the book has been primarily assembled and formed from accumulated results of past exhibitions teaching and research conducted over the years. Its primary focus is on the issues and questions encountered through interactions with diverse students, from high school students to college professors to working artists. There are two parts to the book. The first part, and Lion's Chair, is about ceramics as a medium of art. The closing part, denoted small catalog raisonné, is composed of excerpts from my past exhibition catalogs which I hope will provide some ideas and inspiration for both ceramicists and for artists for various persuasions uh, working through ceramics. Assembling during the period of pandemic in New York City, we desperately needed art and felt that art is essential for survival. My community needed and society needed. Taking into consideration the influence of current sociocultural transformations occurring globally, this book also seeks re recognition on, of the ontological kinship of ceramics and fine art in a contemporary context. This is a thread that runs through the more discursive aspects of the text, while it also illumines some of the practical or practice-based decisions ceramists must make today. Fundamentally, ceramic art is the joy of creating things. I hope this book to be both practical and sustainable from pragmatic point of view and theoretical point of view. Chapter one includes descriptions of different uh, clay types alongside artworks. Clay is part of the soil in our 4.543 billion year old earth and is one of the oldest art form. Clay is the foundation stone in ceramics and connects to the environment, earth, and material reality. Here is an example of earthenware on the left the sculpture from the Jomon period, and stoneware on the right, Shino tea bowl. All of the clay except porcelain that we use at the league is stoneware. And most of the clay found in nature could be called earthenware clay. Clay is a physical entity while at the same time connecting to metaphysics via art history and art theory, as exemplified in Monoha, Minge, Medium Specificity, Arte Povera, Minimalism, Earth Art, Environmental Art, etc. Here is some example of hard paste porcelain and example of bone china. These are different clay type, types of clays. Hard paste porcelain refers to artificial porcelain that's made from compound of feldosphatic rock that, and kaolin fired at high temperature around 1,400 centigrade. Both uh, bone china is comp comprised of bone ash, feldosphatic material, and kaolin. It is translucent and contains at minimum 30% animal bone ash. Chapter 1 continues to talk about Gray's chemistry and unity molecular formula. It is surprising to see uh, Gray's recipes of Shoji Hamada from Mashiko, where I am from, and Bernard Leach at the Greenwich House Pottery in Greenwich Village in New York. Gray's recipes are probably from their visit to New York in 1953 after giving a workshop at New York University. Shoji Hamada Soetz Yanagi Bernard Leach taught a month-long workshop at Black Mountain College in 1952. 
I created a table to understand how minerals and oxides interact under the certain temperature and circumstance. Those crystalline glazes are one of the records that I left in Japan at the Ceramics Research Center in Mashiko, which houses living national treasures. There are millions of glaze test, glaze test pieces accumulated over the centuries. Working with locally available materials, I was searching for a new direction for glaze, but maintaining the traditional glaze. Uh, chapter two is talks about studio practice and talks uh, about tools, wheels, utilitarian design, such as table and concept of design. The traditional Japanese method of wheel training that I have learned takes place eight hours a day, five days a week. It requires a zeal and self-discipline before one can successfully produce wheel thrown ceramics. This section talks about the concept of design. On the left image, a T-ball by Theodor Bogra, we can see a fruitful combination of modular structural principles combined with geometric minimalist shapes as taught at the Bauhaus and shapes derived from Japanese design. On the right side, we can see a Q2 by Shoji Hamada. Its geometry, simplicity, and practicality exemplified Mingei, a Japanese folk art movement. Chapter three is about figure and animal ceramic sculpture, including relief, semi-figurative, and abstract sculptures. Then geometric forms, which can be seen under the sculptures. Works of Egyptian, Greek, Michelangelo, Canova, Benini, Carpo, Rodin, Archipenko, and Chinese Tang Dynasty figurine, figurines are introduced, introduced in this chapter. On the left, 18th century neoclassical Italian sculptor Antonio Canova's terracotta sculpture of Venus and Cupid. On the right, we can see Greek Tanagra figurines. The design of integrated figures looks modern. As a matter of fact, the great modernist sculptor Eli Nederman did a series of figures in the manner of Tanagra. Two of his over life size sculptures are located in the David H. Koch Theater, home of New York City Ballet. This book shows recurring forms and themes in sculptures. In this section, several representational figure sculptures are shown chronologically, including reliefs. On the left, we can see Virgin and Child in a niche by Luca de Gerobia, and on the right, a relief by Augustus St. Gaudens, who taught at the League from 1888. In this section, the focus is on classical forms and geometries, and we will examine non-Euclidean form later. In formalism, form is one of the seven elements of art. The objective of all creative effort in visual arts is to give form to space. But what is space? How can it be understood and given a form? Walter Gropius, The Theory and Organization of the Bauhaus, 1923. While Kandensky's point and line to plane is well known in abstract painting, looking through these basic properties of three-dimensionality are useful for sculpture. Here we can see ceramics that contains torus, ellipsoid shapes, a surface that may be obtained from a sphere by deforming it. Chapter four talks about color on ceramics, how we perceive colors on ceramics, a description of color interactions and how that can be applied on ceramic sculpture. This section belongs to the realm of physics versus aesthetics, but when explaining ceramic glazes, it is appropriate to start with what color is. Our eyes and our brain together create colors. This section briefly introduces color theory such as Mansell color system, Johannes Itten, Joseph Albers, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, and Mark Rothko. Pre previous slides are on analytical presentation of the phenomena of color, while on the other hand, if color evoke uh, different emotions in humans, it is obvious that there are subjective issues involved that transcend mere physics. Here example of how, we, how colors are applied to ceramic sculptures. Throughout most of its history, sculpture has utilized the application of color for purpose of symbolisms and vermicillitude. In the contemporary context, the, color of, the use of color in sculpture supports different perspectives toward further dialogues. 
yet not as distinct from formalism, but in terms of multiple sociocultural points of view. Chapter 5 briefly introduces art theories from modern, postmodern minimalism, postminimalism, metamodern to contemporary, and my past catalogue raisonne, all concerns and relevant subjects raised in my classes. In the next slides, we can see examples of my exhibited works. This is a catalogue from my exhibition at the Consulate General of Japan in New York, but actual sculpture was done as a part of the League's model to monument. A 12 feet figure denoted spirit is emerging from the bars. For me, the role and responsibility of presenting work in the public sphere is to consider both the practical and aesthetic experience of the viewer. I wanted my piece to be a vehicle of communication and the celebration of craftsmanship and humanity through an aesthetic image. The ceramic vase, while introducing the history of utilitarian ceramics, represented on another level of continuing innovative tradition passed from one generation to another. The vessel also acted as a symbiosis for holding together the remnants of many civilizations. Spirit was installed at Riverside Park South in Manhattan in 2013. On the right side slide, a mother and child has been one of my ongoing sculpture themes <coughs> since 2014. It's a time-honored theme for depicting the human condition in terms of composition and one that is dear to my heart. The creative urge contains ins instinctive and intuitive aspects. It is mostly rooted in the unconscious and enhances our rational thinking. From Carl Jung's perspective, the creative process has a feminine quality, which is the realm of the mothers. Next slide are additional examples. This plate was designed in the lineage of Minge and a concept of universal design, which helps the handicapped. The image on the right side is a fusion of animal sculpture and teapot. The words bumbuku chagama are roughly translatable to happiness bubbling over like a teapot. Tanuki sculpture can be seen everywhere in Mashiko. This sculpture refers to the history of ceramic sculpture, especially the gray ceramics of Luca de Jarovia from Renaissance, where we have seen in slide 11, and the floating clouds found in the painting of Japanese Yamatoe painting. The latter which denotes time, space, and changing scenery. The creation of both periods overlaps in the 15th century. Synthesizing art history from the same era, but across different geographies, opens up a different perspective or metamodern approach. On the right side, on the right image, Spirit of New York City is a site-specific public sculpture that harmonizes with its environmental, environmental milieu a plaza in Carl Schwarz Park in Manhattan. It is a sculpture that prompts people to look back at the history of sculpture along with the history of the park, and it becomes a part of the community's memory. Baroque sculpture, as exemplified by John, Jean Lorenzo Benini's Truth Unveiled by Time, created between 1646 and 1652, coincides with the same time frame during which a Dutch farmer first owned the land upon which the park now stands. In 1910, when the park was renamed Carl Schwartz, after the German revolutionary and American senator, a new sculpture was created in Paris, Sleeping Muse, sculpted by the father of modernist sculptor Brancusi. The style and form of my piece is attributed to both of these periods through its synchronic elaboration of references and times. The sculpture Ramel is composed of modular forms connoting a tripartite synthesis of matter, space, movement. He was inspired by the third, by the third movement of Debussy's Ramel, Dialogue of the Wind and Sea. Notably, Hokusai's woodblock print, The Great Wave, was an inspiration for the ins impressionist composer Debussy and was used on the cover of the first edition of Ramel. Art crosses different disciplines, boundaries, time and contributes to humanity. On the right image, looking at this work from different angles allows the viewer to perceive how planes continue and twist with 
color gradation, but also the relationship between positive form and surrounding negative spaces. Art changes human perception and consciousness, composed of non-orientable manifolds. It has neither inside nor outside. It exists phenomenologically, but also symbolically, as an insider and outsider of boundaries of social, cultural, political, or ideological identity. It implies the relationships of ceramics to society or art and society. I have listed all books that I referred in the book, in this book. There are 96 references. If you find interesting subjects, you can do further reading. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>